Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back to talk about affordable staples that I feel like could fit into anybody's collection. So anyways, for the most part, these are all, except for one, these are all really, really affordable uh, perfumes. I tried to keep it realistic, things that I think are people pleasers, perfumes that I feel like um, are accessible to pretty much everybody and perfumes that are most of all affordable because um, yeah, I think from here on out until things start to get better, I am going to start focusing more on affordable fragrances. Um, I've definitely got some, um, I've got a sample order coming where I ordered a whole bunch of decants and I did order a few little niche samples here and there, but for the most part, yeah, I feel like we're all in need of affordability right now. So anyways, I've got 16 different fragrances here and I'm going to jump right in. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about, this is such a gem. And and this is an old, old signature of mine. I used to wear this mm, back in the early 2000s. I think right around, I think the year it came out um, is when I, I started wearing this. I did only wear it for about a year, but I loved it. So this is Moschino I Love Love. And this, you can find it on FragranceNet. Um, I found my bottle used on Mercari for, I don't know, like, I think under $15. Um, you can find this on FragranceNet for, I think, in the $20 range, maybe $22. And it's just a beautiful, really, really happy, bright, effervescent smelling citrusy fragrance. It's really, really similar to Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, but it has more depth than Light Blue does. It's a little bit richer smelling, but without being any heavier. This one also performs way, way better than Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, and I just love it. I just love it so much. It's just such a good fragrance. And if you want something even more affordable than I Love Love, uh, I just discovered a fragrance called Cuba Miami or Cuba City Miami, which is almost identical to this as well. It's a, maybe a little bit creamier where this one's a little bit uh, more citrus forward and a little bit sharper smelling, which I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, Cuba City Miami is very, very similar. And it's, I mean, we're talking, it doesn't get more affordable than those Cuba fragrances. You can get, um, you can get a 3.3 ounce bottle for around $8. So yeah, just a really, really amazing, affordable staple for my collection. Okay, I knew that I was gonna have to have a coconut perfume in this video, and it was hard for me to narrow it down, but when thinking about kind of getting the most bang for your buck and something that's gonna perform really well but still be really, really affordable, this is definitely the one that came to mind. This is Sarah Jessica Parker uh, NYC Crush, and I also have Pure Crush, which is very, very similar. It's just not quite as sweet, and it doesn't have... Um, I think Crush has a lot of vanilla in it, and Pure Crush doesn't. Pure Crush is much more fresh and watery smelling. This one is much more uh, creamy and almost gourmand smelling. And I went with this one over Pure Crush because Pure Crush is a little bit more difficult to find. Um, just the original Crush is very, very easy to find these days. But anyways, yeah, just beautiful. It's a beast of a fragrance. It lasts all day long. It's beautiful in heat. It's beautiful in the cold weather. It's just a really, really nice, creamy, yummy, pretty true coconut smelling fragrance. Um, this one gets pretty mixed reviews. If you read reviews on Fragrantica, um, you'll get, you'll see a lot of people talk about how it smells synthetic to them or, um, yeah, or it's too sweet, which thankfully I just don't have that uh, problem with this. There are also mixed reviews on just the original SJP NYC fragrance, which is a strawberry perfume. Um, there are mixed reviews on that one too. People, the people that don't like it feel like it smells really synthetic or that it smells cheap. Thankfully I don't get that from these. Um, I don't get cheap at all. And it does smell synthetic, but what does a natural, I mean, I guess Pure Crush smells a little bit more natural than, you know, Crush. This one is really, really nice. Um, and you get a lot, again, you get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. So it's, it's just a really great coconut. And again, I think it's $25 or under. So anyways, that is Sarah Jessica Parker NYC Crush. 
This next one is one of my favorite fragrances like in my collection. I just feel like it is such an incredible, just everyday, perfect, happy, beautiful, feminine perfume. This is Lanvin Jean Lanvin. And this is a really bright, sweet, light floral. Um, this one, I, I mention this every single time I talk about this because it gets compared to Gucci 2, the, um, the one in the little cube bottle with the pink liquid. And this also has pink liquid, but it's just like a really light pink. And it does smell similar to that. There's just something so pleasant about this perfume. It's just like a perfect staple perfume. This is a perfume that anybody could have in their collection. It could be a great signature. It could be a great everyday fragrance. It would be good for the office. It would smell good for going out. It's casual and super easy going. And it's a really beautiful, sweet feminine floral, but without smelling too flowery, if that makes any sense. It's just a beautiful perfume. I love it. It warms on the skin beautifully. It's another one. This one doesn't last quite as long as the first two that we talked about, but you'll still easily get four or six hours out of this before you would need to reapply. It lasts a long time on clothing, and it's just an affordable gem that is an absolute staple in my collection. It's one of those perfumes that if you don't know what to reach for, it's just an easy to reach for fragrance. Um, you're gonna smell amazing, and and it's an absolute crowd pleaser too. Just a really beautiful staple perfume. And again, twenty dollars or under, to maybe twenty two dollars. No, I think it's under twenty dollars. Um, just a really beautiful, affordable fragrance. So, anyways, that is Jean Lanvin. This next one, unfortunately, this one they have raised the price on this fragrance over the last few years, I feel like, because it got so, so hyped up. But even at the prices, you can still find it for, I want to say between $25 and $35. So it's still really very affordable. I think I paid between $20 and $25 for mine. I want to say right around $22 for mine uh, back before they jacked the price up. But anyways, this is our Moth Club de Nuit Intense. And this is an absolute spot on dupe for Tom Ford Noir de Noir. This is a heavy, sweet, woody, kind of antique smelling rose. It's syrupy. It's slightly incense -y. It's almost got like a chocolate quality to it. It doesn't have chocolate in it, but it's got a chocolate smell to it. It's smooth and rich and syrupy, like a rose liqueur or something. Oh, it's stunning. It is you want to talk about bang for your buck. This is an amazing winter scent. It's an amazing going out scent. It's a, a, like a beautiful special occasion scent where you can be like me and just pull it out any time of year whenever you're craving it because it's amazing. I have been known to pull this out in the middle of the summer because I will just crave it. And so I'll just pull it out and spray it on. I don't care how hot it is outside. Beautiful, very expensive smelling fragrance for pennies really yeah you still can i think you can still find it on ebay for quite a good price or i think even amazon maybe for quite a good price but yeah if you go on some of the discount sites like uh, fragrance and i think has jacked up the price fragrance x i think has jacked up the price so yeah if you just kind of search around a little bit you can still find a really good deal um, but it's an amazing, an amazing staple fragrance in my collection and so, so affordable. So anyways, that is our Moth Club de Nuit Intense. Okay, next we have got a Zara fragrance and this one, I feel like this is an amazing staple fragrance to have and it's such a crowd pleaser and it's such an easy going fragrance and such an easy to reach for affordable fragrance. I just feel like it's an amazing staple. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with my voice. It's, I'm kind of starting to lose my voice actually, but um, I'll go grab a drink in a minute and <laughs> see if we can rectify this. But anyways, this is Zara Water Lily Tea Dress and this is from the Zara Emotions line. Um, I do own the lotion and I will layer this over the lotion to get much more uh, or to get much better performance out of it. If you layer it over the lotion, you can get hours and hours out of this perfume. This is just a beautiful kind of green, kind of uh, 
green leaning, kind of astringent smelling, very fresh watery floral. And it's amazing. This is one of my most complimented perfumes in my collection. People absolutely love this perfume. I always tell the story about how um, I layered this over the lotion and then I went to Ulta to shop and I got up to the register and you know you walk in Ulta and it smells amazing because they've got all of those beautiful perfumes in there like right in the middle of the store and so you it's just it smells so good in there and anyways I got up to the register and the girl was like oh my gosh you smell so good and this is what I was wearing and at first I was like well thank you and um, I was thinking how can you even smell me over all of these other perfumes but she could she could smell it and she loved it it was just it's just such a people pleaser it's just super easy to reach for it's like under twenty dollars and just such an amazing staple for anybody to have in their collection. I don't think that there would be many people out there that would absolutely hate this. Um, yeah, I just think it's an amazing little staple to have. So anyways, that is Zara Water Lily Tea Dress. Next, I've got a vanilla fragrance, and this is such, it's just such a good vanilla, and it's such a staple because you can use it, you can wear it on its own, you can use it to layer with. Um, it's just a great perfume to have in your collection. This is Outremer Vigny. This, you can pick this up at, you should still be able to get it at Anthropology. I think for $18. If you can't find it, find it at Anthropology, they do have it on smallflower.com. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. I think $22 or 24, I think $22 on Smallflower. But either way, it's incredibly affordable. It's an amazing <laughs> vanilla fragrance. It's a sweet cotton candy vanilla. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what the notes are, vanilla and cotton candy. And it's yummy. It's creamy, it's super sweet, it's vanilla. This is an absolute beast on me. Other people say that they do have issues with performance on this one, thankfully I don't. This thing will last forever on me, especially in the cold weather. In cold weather, it's just, gosh, I can easily get eight hours out of this. I love to use it to layer with. You can see I've got a huge dent in this because this comes, um, these fragrances actually come filled all the way up into the neck. So I do have quite a big dent in mine, but I do use it to layer all of the time. Oh, I just love it. It's got an amazing, like very fine spray. And for, you know, for under $25, it's just a great little staple to have in your collection. So anyways, that is Outremer Vigny. Okay, this next one, this is a classic. I've had a bottle of this in my collection since it came out um, back in the 90s. I absolutely love this. Um, it's To me, it's an absolute classic and still holds up to this day. This is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea. Um, it's funny because I have had a lot of people recently, like in the last year or so, tell me that they hate this fragrance, which I can completely understand. Um, oh gosh, but I love it. And I think that the majority of us love this. Or it could be split in half, I don't know. I, it's funny because I hadn't heard anybody say that they didn't like it until pretty recently. Which again, I can totally see, but this is a beautiful citrusy, super calming, zen tea fragrance. It's very uplifting, it's very fresh, and just beautiful. I love it. Again, it's such a classic. It used to be an absolute beast back in the day. You could apply it once and you'd be good for the entire day. Unfortunately, like most modern perfumes that have been reformulated, it is pretty watered down these days but it still smells the same and I still love it. This is actually one of my Project Pan perfumes which I really need to get on. This one I haven't worn it at all since I put it in my Project Pan box. So yeah, this is one I need to get a move on, but um, gosh, I do love this perfume. Again, I think it's an absolute staple that anybody would be happy to have in their collection. Um, it's great for really, really hot days. It's great for if, when you just get out of the shower and you're just hanging around the house and you just want to smell amazing, it's great for that. Um, it's just a great staple fragrance and I can't imagine my collection without it. Um, in fact, I really would, I don't know how well this one would have held up over the years, but I would love to try to find a vintage bottle of this. Um, oh, it would make my heart so happy. So anyways, that is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea. 
This next one, this is the most, and this one you can find again for under, you can find this one for about 10 or $12 on if you get the one ounce bottle. Um, yeah, you can find it for about 10 or $12, maybe even under $10 at this point. Okay, this next one is the only one on this list that is pretty pricey. Um, if you find it on Ulta, you can, like you can wait until they have a um, coupon that works on Prestige as well as Perfume, or you can save up points and get it if you didn't want to pay, you know, pay the price, you know, like Chanel prices. But this is the only one I had to include in this in this lineup that is a little bit pricey. And this is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. And the reason I had to include this one is because it's, gosh, it's such a pleasant fragrance. It's light and soft and a little bit powdery and slightly floral and a little bit woody. It's just a perfect like everyday fragrance and I feel like it's such a staple in so many of our collections. Um, there are just so many of us that love this one. I have, I would have included Eau Fraiche as well, but I have a better, cheaper alternative to Eau Fraiche, um, which is, but I didn't really have a better or cheaper alternative for Eau Tendre, so. I have other fragrances that kind of smell like this, but nothing really smells like this. It's just, it's such a good one. I'll have to see if I can find a good dupe for Otondra. I'm sure there's one out there. In fact, I'm about to film, when I get done with this video, I'm gonna film a video talking all about fragrances that I would like to find a dupe for. And maybe I'll go ahead and add this one to the list because I would really like to find a dupe for it because it's pretty pricey. Um, it doesn't perform all that well. This is the Eau de Parfum. It performs a little bit better than the Eau de Toilette, but it still doesn't perform all that well. Um, yeah, and I would love to find a good dupe for you guys. But anyways, I feel like it's an amazing little staple to have in your collection. And yeah, I really enjoy it. So that is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. Okay, and then the one that I have that is a good alternative to Eau Fraiche is this one here. This is Zara Apple Juice. And this is beautiful. This is a lot like Eau Tendre, but if you replace the kind of light powdery florals in Eau Tendre with bright citruses. That's what you get with Zara Apple Juice. It's, oh gosh. It's bright citruses, but it's also got, it's got like a smoothness to it. So it's not, it's not like overly citric. It's like a smooth citrus with some light woods in the base. It's really, really beautiful. Um, again, such a staple. And Zara Apple Juice, is number one, smells very, very similar to it, and number two is a tenth of the price. It's This one is literally like $10, and the Chanel is over 100 So yeah, I just feel like it's such, it's such a great little staple to have in your collection, especially for being a $10 perfume. It's just a great little staple. Um, it is great for hot weather. It's super wearable. It's a crowd pleaser and yeah, it's just a good staple. So anyways, that is our apple juice. Next, we had to have a rose fragrance on this list and when I, this was the first one that came to mind when I thought of a staple rose because I feel like this is a rose that even people that don't enjoy rose would really like and this is Trussardi Delicate Rose. So. This is a really beautiful, light, bright, clean, fresh, modern rose. It's slightly shampoo-y, so it's like really, really clean, slightly sweet, light, super fresh, kind of slightly green, very modern smelling rose. Again, I think people that don't like rose would enjoy this perfume, and it is such a staple in my collection because it is so affordable, it performs really, really well. So I can easily, I used to wear this one to work all the time when I would work 10 hour days because it would get me through an entire 10 hour day. You can smell it on clothes, clothing forever. It's a people pleaser. Um, it's just a great staple to have in your collection. This is definitely a staple rose in my collection because it's one that I don't have to really think about. I can just reach for it and spray it on. Um, Ugh, and know that I'm just gonna smell good. So anyways, that is Trussardi Delicate Rose. I could say the same for Trussardi Donna. Um, if I didn't have Orlov from Orlov Paris, then I would have had 
Chusardi Donna in this collection as well because it's another really beautiful, sweet, kind of clean floral. Next, I knew I had to have a woody fragrance on this list because woody fragrances are such a staple for cooler weather, especially the fall. I don't know what it is about fall and a woody fragrance, but this is the fragrance I would choose for a woody fragrance. This is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon, and this is woods and vanilla, basically but mostly woods. It's very, very slightly sweet, almost not sweet at all. It's very, very woody though, but it's a really smooth wood. It's not like, I don't know, sometimes woods can be too overpowering, but this one isn't. This one is really, it's soft and smooth, but still very, very woody and just very slightly sweet and smoothed out from the vanilla. It's a super nice, very, very affordable woody fragrance. It's only like three notes, so it's very simple. It's very linear, but I feel like it's such a staple. I've had this perfume in my collection since, I wanna say like 2000, maybe 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. Um, I didn't grab it right when it came out. I did wait a little while until the price, because it was crazy expensive when it first came out, because I think they only carried it at Sephora at that point. Um, but once the price started to drop is when I finally picked it up and I've had a bottle of it in my collection ever since. I feel like it's an amazing staple fragrance, especially for those cooler months, especially for fall. And yeah, I just really like it. It's very easy to reach for and it's almost like a beginner wood fragrance. I feel like people that, you know, are just dipping their toes into woody fragrances, this would be a good place to start. So anyways, that is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon. Okay, this next one, I just talked about this perfume in I think the last video I posted, but this has been such a staple in my collections for the past probably 20-ish years at this point, or well, not quite 20, I wanna say maybe 18 years or something, because I picked this up right when it came out and I've had a bottle of this in my collection ever since. This is Aquilina Pink Sugar. This is another one that it was never like super, super expensive, but it was a lot more expensive because they only carried it at Sephora when it first came out. And over the years now, you can pick this up at TJ Maxx, almost any TJ Maxx for like $12.99. You can pick it up on FragranceNet again for really, really inexpensive. Like I think this bottle on uh, FragranceNet right now is about $10. So, and that's the same with, um, the Nirvana Bourbon, you can pick this up for I think less than $25. Uh, Trusardi Delicate Rose, again, I feel like it's less than $25. Um, so super, super affordable. But yeah, this is an absolute, this is another one that it's like you get a lot of bang for your buck. It performs really well. I don't think that this one's ever been reformulated, so they haven't butchered it. And it's yummy. It's like, this to me is my first true gourmand fragrance. Um, it's caramel and sugar and it's super sweet. It's got a ton of notes in it. It's got like red berries and just a ton of notes in it. But it's just a, it's an absolute staple in my collection. You can, this can be worn any time of year. I particularly love this in the colder months though because it's very, very strong in the colder months. And yeah, I just, this is an absolute staple in my collection. I could not live without this one. So anyways, that is Aquilina Pink Sugar. Okay, this next one is another Zara fragrance. This is Zara Violet Blossom. And this to me is, is such a staple for me because I just love this perfume. This is for those of you out there that want like a good kind of powerhouse fragrance, but you don't like Alien, you don't like Hypnotic Poison, um, you're, you, so, there's something about those perfumes that you just don't like. This is one that you might like because it's in that kind of same family. The only problem with this one is it doesn't perform well at all, but I love this. This is only three notes. Again, I think it's, um, maybe magnolia, cherry blossom, and tonka bean. I think those are the three notes, I can't totally remember. It's got like a slight powderiness to it, it's really, really sweet. It's syrupy smelling, it's just a great fragrance. I love this one. This is another one that I get a ton of compliments on it. 
um, for the little bit of time that you can smell it and it's just a great staple to have in your collection it's a great bedtime fragrance there's something super cozy about this and yeah i just love it it's an absolute staple for me so anyways that is zara violet blossom and now that we're talking about bedtime fragrances i'm gonna have to add one we're gonna add one so we're gonna have 17 perfumes in this video okay next is i feel like every perfume collection could use a white musk um, you could easily get by with like a Jovan white musk or body shop white musk. Uh, those are perfectly decent white musks, but I feel like this one here is just a little bit more, it's a little bit more elevated smelling and I just love it the most. This is smells like a stero. This perfume oil, um, you can pick this up on this, on the Astero website for like $11 and 30 cents, I think. It's very, very affordable, but it is the most beautiful, warm, clean white musk. And it smells, there's something about it that smells so much better than like Jovan white musk or the Body Shop white musk. It smells more expensive and cozier and warmer and just better. It's an amazing white musk scent and has become such a staple in my collection. Um, Sometimes I will layer this with the Kumba Made Vanilla Musk. Sometimes I'll layer them together, but you really don't need to. This one on its own is amazing. So anyways, that just smells like a Stero. Um, it's just such, I feel like, the perfect staple white musk for anybody's collection. Okay, this next one, this is <laughs> this has become such a staple in my collection. I this one lives out on my desk because I wear it so often because I love it so much. I love it so much more than I ever expected to. This is a perfume from a brand called Women's Secrets. This is a pretty good dupe for YSL Manifesto. And I will say, I Manifesto unfortunately has been discontinued. For me, this one is, it's just as good. It smells amazing. It performs about the same, even maybe a little bit better. It's got a really beautiful, fine mist sprayer and it's just, it's amazing. I love this perfume. It's like $18, it's so affordable, and I feel like it's a, it is a complete staple in my collection, but I feel like it could be a great staple for anybody, especially for my manifesto lovers. Oh gosh, it's so good. It's warm, vanilla, tonka. It's got some flowers in it. It's just an amazing fragrance, and yeah, I can't imagine my collection without it at this point. So anyways, that is Women's Secret. I'm sorry, it's called Oh My Secret. They have other, I think that, I think that brand has a dupe for Chanel Eau Fraiche. Um, they've got a black opium dupe, which is really, really nice. Yeah, they've, it, they've, they may kind of smell like perfumes and they're really good, like really good quality ones. Okay, this next one, I feel like this is such a staple in so many people's collections and it's definitely a staple in mine as well. This is Ariana Grande Cloud. Um, I think that this is the perfume that most of us have in our collection that gives us that Baccarat Rouge 540 scent profile. This one is much smoother. It's much more wearable than Baccarat Rouge 540. It's sweeter. It's got the whipped cream in it, which I think is what really sweetens it up and smooths it out. It doesn't have that kind of medicinal scent that Baccarat Rouge 540 can have on some, some people. Thankfully, that medicinal scent doesn't come out on my skin, but I could totally see it. Um, and I understand where people are coming from when they say that it, it gets very medicinal on them. But yeah, this I feel like is such a staple in most of our collections to give us that Baccarat Rouge 540 scent profile. Um, super, super affordable. This is probably the second most expensive fragrance on this list. But even still, I think you can get a one ounce bottle of Cloud for about $40, or you can get a pen spray for, I think, $16 or $18. I just think that it's such a staple. <laughs> I've seen this, I think most of us at this point have this in our collection. Um, yeah, and I could not, I have the intense version as well, which I actually prefer the intense version um, over the original version, but I keep them both and I love them both and they're both absolute staples in my collection. So anyways, that is Ariana Grande Cloud. 
And then last but not least, the one that I had to add because this is such a staple, like maybe the biggest staple in my collection is this one here. This is Oscar de la Renta Lavender and I wear this perfume all of the time. This is a beautiful, sweet, milky, cozy lavender. I wear it to bed most often, but a lot of times I'll just spray it on, like if I'm just hanging out at home, I'll just spray it on and wear it as my perfume of the day. Unfortunately, it performs pretty badly. Um, yeah, I don't even know how long it stays on for because usually I do wear it to bed and by the time I wake up, it's long, long gone. But I think on the days that I've sprayed it on, I think I've gotten maybe an hour out of it or so. Like not very much time at all. But yeah, I do love this. It's such an absolute staple in my collection. I could not imagine not having in the, having this in my collection. And so, so many of you have gone out and, and picked this up because I've talked about it so much. And I don't think I've had a single person come back and say that they didn't love it. Pretty much unanimously, everybody loves this perfume. So anyways, that is Oscar de la Renta Lavender. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are 17 staple fragrances in my collection that I think would make great staples in anybody's collection. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.